Well, hello everyone. It is Yelena and I'm working on Vestnik now. And I have invited Mike Mikhailovich to discuss one very important topic because all of us know that uh, uh, this year it, uh, it has been 25 years since NATO started bombing of Serbia. And I wanted to raise that topic to give, and I wanted to ask Mike to provide us an objective view of what has happened then. And I want to start with these words of uh, uh, Anatoly Adamishin, it's Russian diplomat. Uh, he had written a remarkable article in Russia of Global Politiki journal. It was very interesting to read how the diplomats view uh, the, all those events which happened. And uh, I really recommend you to read this article. I will provide it in the uh, description. And Anatoly, uh, Mr. Adamishin thinks that um, downfall of Soviet Union caused many, uh, it was like a domino effect, which caused also events in Yugoslavia. And he was very, how to say, sad that Russia didn't come to rescue Ser mm -hmm. Serbia when it was the time. And now I'm giving the word to Mike. So I think Mike could tell us more about what has happened then. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Well, let's start first a little bit about history. Yugoslavia was created, the second Yugoslavia was created 1945 after na Nazi and their collaborators were expelled. Uh, and Yugoslavia was based on the federal uh, level, federal uh, um, organization uh, with the multiple uh, republics. Uh, and uh, most importantly, Yugoslavia was a multi-ethnical country, multi-religious country with uh, Orthodox, uh, Catholic and uh, 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 Muslim religions uh, uh, present so um, as that country uh, it did bear a little scars uh, maybe say a lot of scars from the world war ii with some unsolved problems uh, uh, when yugoslavia was born it was um, basically brainchild of the communists uh, tito is uh, uh, josip Broz, uh, yugoslavian dictator or marshal he was uh, he, he came as a winner from the World War II. He was a col collaborator with Stalin uh, and also collaborator with West. So he was somebody who, who, who played the game with uh, both uh, political blocs, uh, both Eastern and, and Western, tried to stay uh, beneath. Who was that guy? It's hard to say. Was he a Croatian guy or was he Polish Jew or Russian Jew? Nobody knows. Was he maybe... Uh, Extramarital uh, son of the one of the um, Austro-Hungarian uh, nobles. Uh, nobody will know. Nobody knows, and nobody will probably know. Uh, most likely, that person was uh, dual, maybe triple, uh, triple different, uh, dif different characters. Anyway, he ruled Yugoslavia with iron fist for thirty something years, and at that time. Um, all other uh, national groups in Yugoslavia prosper. Serbia was put on the margins because Serbia, Serbian people is a traditional royalist uh, and, and religious people were put on, on the margins. Uh, Serbia is a, uh, is a unit, republic, <laughs> got two, um, two uh, provinces, uh, Vojvodina and Kosovo, which was basically uh, like a thorn in, in, in the Serbian hips. Uh, and everything starts actually from that uh, 1945. Uh, I would also say that Serbia prospered during the uh, during that time because the economy was good, uh, industry was good, people had uh, decent salaries. But uh, for many, Yugoslavia was artificial uh, creature. Yugoslavia was like a Soviet Union uh, in my, on a micro scale, multi multi ethnic uh, country, um, several republics, uh, provinces. Uh, and as that, uh, Serbia was uh, also, uh, Yugoslavia was located on the, cro I, I, I call that often, crossroads of empires. So from the, whoever going to, to conquer something on East has to uh, cross over Serbia. Uh, those from the East, uh, when they go to West, they have to cross uh, over Serbia. So pretty, uh, pretty bad neighborhood, how people uh, like to say uh, in the West. Uh, the breakup of Yugoslavia was very well and carefully orchestrated game. It was a test, a test bed, proving ground how one multi-ethnic country that uh, has a reasonable um, uh, and uh, reasonable politics and strong strong for that time economy was broken. Uh, broken was inside because the, those forces in the West. Uh, 
they play with the with the politicians nation nationalistic politicians for all sides and uh, that was the beginning uh, old wounds uh, unhealed from the world war ii uh, popped up in the 1990s and the people start to fight each other Western countries, they recognize uh, all um, Yugoslavian and former Yugoslavian republics and the Serbs in those uh, republics, uh, they wanted actually to, to stay with, in the same country with, uh, with the rest of uh, uh, Serbian population. So that was one of the, of the main reasons for the civil war. That was bloody war orchestrated from the West. It is the, the only war where, uh, where both is, uh, Islamists, uh, jihadists uh, and uh, Western uh, secret services, they fought uh, shoulder by shoulder, actually their people fought shoulder, uh, to, uh, shoulder by shoulder against uh, the Serbian population. And uh, the civil war uh, was ended in 1995 with the Dayton Agreement, uh, creation of a uh, Serbian entity in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we thought that after uh, economic sanctions, which, which is really, really brutal, uh, uh, that Finally, the time of peace came, but there was one more thing to finish. It was uh, to break uh, in that time uh, the third Yugoslavia, the remnants of the, of the previous country, which consisted of Serbia and Montenegro. Uh, and for to do that, uh, there was not, uh, nothing uh, better than the Serbian promise of Kosovo. Uh, local uh, local gangs, criminal gangs, nar uh, narco gangs, smugglers, they, they were used by uh, uh, European, uh, Western European and uh, U.S. Uh, intelligent groups uh, to initiate the terrorist attacks on the local uh, local authorities. Uh, and uh, as the time passed between 1995 and 1999, getting worse and worse. And of course, Western countries, they, uh, they delegated uh, different uh, so-called peacekeeping missions, uh, observers. They came, they... Uh, but uh, the most, uh, the, their ma major role was um, espionage, uh, to, uh, and, and basically planting uh, everything for the for the further uh, further war. Uh, the war was inevitable. Serbian uh, leadership they made mistakes. Uh, President Milosevic uh, he made mistake. Uh, uh, his henchmen made mistake. Uh, I'm not uh, in, in for for many uh, many of us there. He was a hated person. He was simply a hated person. A person that put us in a lot of trouble. But it uh, it was what it was, so we didn't have any um, any other choice. Culmination started 1998, uh, when NATO simply said that no, they they want uh, Serbia to give uh, full autonomy to to Albanian population, Kosovo Albanian population, uh, and uh, also Serbian to Serbia uh, to withdraw uh, police and military from uh, from its own territory for the sake of uh, establishing. Uh, something that's so-called uh, semi-independent uh, Kosovo entity. Uh, but Serbia is a sovereign country, uh, couldn't accept that. Uh, there was probably some spaces to, to negotiate, but the ultimate goal was to destroy uh, Serbia. Actually, at that time, Serbia was part of Yugoslavia with, uh, together with Montenegro, to destroy it. it that would be coup de grace uh, against uh, that uh, multi-ethnic uh, and multinational country. That was all prelude. 1990s, uh, especially 1999, was prelude. But, uh, what was the intended to Russia to uh, to break Russia into all uh, into small smaller entities? After Russia, it's China, China after, after China, India, Iran, so that uh, world the globalists can take over uh, take over everything. Bear in mind those who planned uh, uh, all of, all of those steps from 1945. Till 1999, you see, it's uh, 50 something years, 54, 54 years uh, of planning to to create some something which which definitely will work for uh, uh, for the West. Uh, Serbia didn't have any other choice than try to try to fight, try to protect. Serbia also relied on on Russia and China, but unfortunately, at that time Russia was led by drunk uh, Yeltsin, and Russia was so weak after the collapse of Soviet Union that and that couldn't do anything. Simply couldn't couldn't help uh, Serbia. So we were basically on our own, surrounded by enemies, uh, by all uh, NATO uh, in 1999, they accepted Romania, Hungary, and Bulgaria uh, as a part of the uh, NATO, NATO, uh, NATO alliance. And uh, everything was ready for, for the war. It was just, uh, just what they wanted is to find an excuse for the military intervention. Uh, so uh, they hired their, their local um, operatives um, in the field through the Albanian terrorist uh, UCK organization, uh, terrorist organization that was one, one upon time recognized by the State Department as a terrorist organization, suddenly overnight they become friends. That is pretty much normal in the, in the West. 
So they organized terrorist attacks on the police. The Serbian special forces uh, came, they break them to pieces, you know, kill a lot of them. And that was the, uh, that was the uh, initial point that, uh, that NATO gave Serbia ultima uh, ultimatum. Either uh, Serbia will uh, withdraw from Kosovo and leave it at, uh, to NATO, or it will be, uh, it will be bombing. So any, uh, no matter how we, uh, I'm talking about myself and, and the people that I know, how we oppose the President Milosevic and his rules, uh, our country was um, uh, in danger, so we don't care about president. We had a lot of bad words for him. We cursed him a lot. But uh, when the time comes to defend country, this is the only choice that normal people, patriots, uh, can do. Americans know, uh, talk a lot, a lot about the patriotism, but there is not only patriotism in the States. There are some patriotism in some other countries. Uh, Serbia, uh, Serbia need to be, uh, according to the NATO plan, Serbia need to be cut, uh, the pro promise of Kosovo need, need to be occupied, and uh, the one of the largest uh, NATO bases uh, shall be established on the, on the Serbian territory. Uh, that was that was prelude. Unfortunately, Serbian military, after the years of uh, blockade uh, sanctions, uh, was not able to to get any, any, any new equipment, so all our weapons, all our equipment was from the, the youngest one was from uh, mid 80s, especially air, air defense was uh, uh, we, uh, at that time we counted it uh, that we will be hit most hard on the most hardest way, and uh, that basically happened. But uh, we have to do what we ha we had to do what we had to do at uh, that time, as I already mentioned. Uh, like or not, uh, um, President uh, at that time he was the supreme commander, commander in chief. So what the loyal citizen can do. Uh, just put aside all um, difficulties, all disagreements with uh, with the ruling elite, and try to do best to to to, uh, to protect the country. Uh, so the war was inevitable. Uh, our intelligence got some information in uh, 1998 uh, about the, the plans, so we were able to deflect that uh, initial um, uh, NATO uh, uh, threats. Uh, during 1998, uh, uh, but we, we knew that as soon as the time get better in the spring uh, 1999, we can expect um, a massive uh, NATO attack. The, we, we knew that they're going to use um, extremely um, air power because they, they gathered uh, initially several hundred uh, top-notch combat aircraft around. At the end of uh, NATO aggression, it was more than 1,000. And we had only 20 uh, MiG-29, which was relatively modern plane, but out of 12, uh, only nine was uh, flight worthies, and um, our air defense, uh, one brigade, one regiment of S one twenty five or SA three Goa uh, Goa system, and several regiments of Tuke uh, twelve uh, or, or uh, Kub uh, system. So that was only only that stand be, um, uh, between NATO air, and air power and Serbia. The war was inevitable, and uh, we tried to do whatever we can so that at least try to deflect uh, that initial uh, uh, NATO attack. And everything started on March 24th. Uh, we knew that uh, that stuff is going to happen. Um, and as soon as our intelligence uh, gathered inform information about uh, NATO plans in Italy, Germany, um, uh, UK, uh, that they're uh, running, they're preparing for attack. Uh, the alert was raised, and uh, before that, we uh, already dislocate our, our units on the reserve, alternative positions, uh, combat positions during the, uh, so which were not known to uh, to NATO. On the night uh, on 24th, NATO executed first attack, uh, uh, and they knew what we have. So, uh, so they uh, for them uh, this first uh, night of attack was just a testing. Of the concept uh, for the stealth bomber B2 F 117A, uh, then um, uh, combat air patrol over Bosnia, over over Hungary, uh, and from uh, and over, over and from Adriatic Sea, uh, and everything started uh, started on that fateful uh, uh, March 24th. So the first bomb uh, landed, I think, about uh, eight o'clock. Um, I was on the phone with a friend of mine, and I I, I simply I, I heard. Uh, I heard the buzz of the planes and the explosion, so I told him it started. So then, in a few seconds, he said, "Yeah," uh, because he lived uh, close to the uh, Batain uh, MiG-29 base. He told me, "Yeah, they, they just took off, and everything start uh, start from there." Uh, immediately after that, I was uh, already on, uh, on the on the on the on the position. So that that was that was the beginning. Mm, I see, and. Uh... 
before uh, I did a bit of study before we started before the recording of the interview. And as far as I understand, NATO has already used aircraft against Serbian forces before the bombings of Belgrade. It was when they established a non a non flight zone over Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah, that was in 1995. They, um, uh, I think, yeah. it was Operation Deliberate Force. They bombed Serbian positions. They were basically uh, Bosnian um, troops, air force. Like now, they're uh, their air force for the ISIS. So uh, the same the same story. So they uh, they wanted to impose the force peace. To bring Serbs to Tunisia, as they, as they always uh, like to say, they, they said in, in their news. Um, yeah, that was bombing on Serbian uh, positions. But you know, th those guys spent four years in war, so they knew exactly uh, what is going to happen. So NATO, no matter how much they bombed the buildings, uh, uh, overall they didn't achieve. Uh, they didn't achieve a lot. Uh, fortunately, peace was signed, uh, and Serbia got, let's say, 51% of the Bosnian territory. Even the Serbian population uh, was in majority in, in much more. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, so NATO, NATO was already present on the Balkans, and uh, NATO also uh, after the uh, I think it's, it was 1998 they established the no-fly zone over Kosovo. So we, we, that was agreement with, uh, with the Yugoslavian government, so that uh, Yugoslavia will not use combat aircraft, uh, any, any combat missions over the uh, over the Kosovo uh, territory. And uh, we had some reduction of the, of the forces there. Uh, NATO constantly uh, surveyed uh, all Serbian positions, uh, especially air defense, uh, uh, um, airport near Pristina. Uh, so uh, where the interceptors were located. So NATO and uh, on the ground, NATO spies uh, disguised as an um, international peacekeeping mission, how they like to call it. They collected and gathered all, all relevant information to, to our forces. So, uh, yeah, it was um, it was the jumping board. Uh, so they, they knew everything. But uh, we also we, we, uh, they, uh, we, uh, we knew that the, what they uh, what they're going to do. So we try to to disguise the, uh, everything uh, that we that we can. So, which uh, which came really really uh, very helpful the, during the during the uh, aggression. Yeah, but that was a very brave step step from Ser from Serbians in general because uh, I think you knew that you are surrounded by the states which are not friendly, mm -hmm. and that no one is going to help. Russia is weak and. Uh, Still, S Serbia chose to fight and to protect its own independence. Yes, exactly, because uh, capitulation is not in our uh, our, our language. Uh, no matter, as, as, I, as I mentioned, I didn't like president. I hate that guy, I hate his family, his henchmen. I hate uh, all, all that establishment. But once when I saw uh, very, really uh, where the danger is, I had no, uh, no doubts. And uh, I would say 99% of um, every member of military, military, either regular or reserve, uh, had the same feeling. So when the, when, when the country is in danger and our people, our civilians are in, uh, endangered, uh, so that is the only thing that, uh, that, uh, that we have. So to, to fight, we, we, we knew that it will be hard. We, we knew that uh, probably we are going to lose uh, um, if, if, uh, at, at, the, at the beginning, but uh, uh, what what we hope that uh, after the, uh, the air campaign that they will come uh, by land, and we were actually prepared by land because if they get uh, if NATO got to, to our mountains and you know, on our roads, it will be really 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 bad for them because uh, this is something that we had strength. We have uh, all of those uh, uh, trained people uh, so that they can they, they can create a lot of a lot of problems for the NATO land forces. Well, they didn't come uh, because there were some agreements. Uh, there was a UN. Uh, 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 UN breakup of the uh, negotiation uh, deals. So, uh, and uh, our leadership basically uh, got uh, to a conclusion that uh, we had uh, we had the guarantees of uh, for Kosovo that will be part of our territory. And of course, it was later uh, with the support of US and uh, NATO. Those bandits declared their own uh, own country, independent country. Yeah, and I also wanted to ask, like I also I have uh, my my granddad is Serbian, so I I am also partially Serbian, mm -hmm. and I remember well I I didn't go to uh, granddad's homeland, but my relatives are uh, often visited, and for uh, inhabitants of USSR, Serbia seemed to be like a capitalistic paradise of a sort because they always brought something uh, back to. Uh, like yeah, you're right, because uh, Serbia was country, or Yugoslavia at that time was country, um, 
unaligned country with any of those uh, blocks, Warsaw Pact or uh, NATO Pact. Uh, so for East, we were West. And for West, we were uh, completely different East. So uh, we had a lot of freedoms. Our passport was um, recognized everywhere. So we can go almost every, everywhere in the world without visas. Economy was good. When I was a student at the time, uh, my, uh, I didn't pay any tuitions. Uh, and I also had... Uh, uh, credits for my uh, municipality that was uh, like engineering salary, uh, average engineering salary. So it was really, really good country. But, you know, uh, the problem is that uh, that country was created as, exp uh, as an experiment. And those in power in the West decided that uh, enough of that experiment. So now uh, the, uh, they said, OK, we're going to break that country because this is not a good example. So we want to control everything. On the ones, uh, if you look, for instance, European Union, they, they try to unite all of those western countries but they want those united western countries they wanted to br uh, to break uh, united yugoslavia it's it is simply ridiculous but uh, geopolitics was uh, that that uh, uh, that step in geopolitics actually started after the dissolution of soviet union which was one of the greatest mistakes ever happened in the modern history yeah, and I also have uh, seen some resemblance between what happened in the USSR and between what happened in certain, like in Yugoslavia then. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, according to diplomats and according to what I have understood that it is, was like uh, destruction of Yugoslavia was uh, like um, a final nail into the coffin of the USSR because... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, not only me and my family, but also a lot of people in Russia. I remember how people were um, like hypnotized by the West, and we thought that US is the uh, they are so good, and Europe it is something we must align to. And then suddenly, when events in Serbia began, like in 1999, of course everything was happening before that, but we were yeah. too much preoccupied within what was happening in the country and then we suddenly seen the bombings of belgrade and it was something which contradicted the reality very very se severely yeah, of course, exactly. some people understood what is happening but for common people who just live their lives and suddenly something like that happens and it was like a cold shower you know and it turned away many i think of my countrymen against uh, against the us we yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, uh, if anybody tried to attack uh, Yugoslavia fr from outside without interfering with uh, uh, in trying to break uh, uh, inside, Yugoslavia was actually a very strong country, but they always found somebody, uh, so those nationalists or all kinds of nationalists, so they started financing them. And uh, this is the Yugoslavian Soviet Union was actually the exactly uh, one uh, exemplary uh, way how to how to destroy country from uh, uh, from inside, creating uh, oligarchs, creating uh, uh, crisis, uh, unsolved problems uh, since uh, uh, World War II or even 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 earlier. And this is the fertile ground. See, I see he's doing that uh, to the Soviet Union from uh, 1945. Uh, see what's going on in, in Ukraine, all of those uh, Banderists uh, and uh, uh, nationalists in the different uh, republics. The same, thing, the same thing is on the smaller scale happening in Yugoslavia. The same things will happen in China if something, is, is not, if something is, uh, does not stop that, that trend. Well, it looks like China, uh, West also tries to create something like this in China. Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ukur minority. Like, yeah, Ukur minority in Xinjiang province. Uh, then India, 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 look how many different uh, nationalities, religious groups live in India. It's so fertile ground uh, for breakup. Uh, and if, if this trend in the politics continue, that will be the, the order. Not necessarily one by one, but um, it is uh, it is something is going to happen. And what is now going on in Russia is that Russia has stood on 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 that way, stood and yeah. still standing on that way, on their yeah. way. Because it would be I I don't know what the world would be if it, if it didn't uh, well turned out the way it turned out. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. two See, years back. During the Cold, Cold War, there was always tension between superpowers, the Soviet Union and, and U.S., but people who, who were in charge, uh, they were basically uh, ideological enemies and opponents. But now what we have, we have lunatics in charge. Mm -hmm. And if, if people are reasonable, they can they, they can have a different opinion. But there is a uh, there are things that uh, on both sides they will never cross. But now with the lunatics on on one side, it is it is really really big problem. And I personally think that uh, chances for global war are much much higher than during the Cold War. And I, I served the regular military during the Cold War. Yeah, we had all of those exercises, enemies. Uh, we trained how to stop um, NATO planes, how to even stop a Soviet plane, because uh, again, Yugoslavia was uh, in that kind, um, uh, not aligned, uh, unaligned country with uh, with any of those blocks. So we we play, we trained uh, both uh, how to resist the Soviet uh, invasion or how to resist uh, Western invasion. Uh, but uh, you know, at that time, at least politicians were uh, or can be considered considered as is, is a normal. Uh, healthy, healthy, unfriendly, uh, normal, uh, no, normal politics. But now there is nothing. Not, there is nothing healthy, especially uh, nothing uh, mentally uh, healthy uh, among uh, certain uh, world elites. Yeah, because I read a very interesting opinion say on the Olympics, uh, even in the times of Cold War, when Soviet Union invaded Af um, Afghanistan and U.S. ignored the Olympics yeah. in Moscow, and then Moscow ignored the next Olympics in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nobody excluded the country from Olympic movements. So. Yeah, because all of those uh, the Olympic movement, uh, football, um, UFA or, or FIFA, everything, everything is now politicized, and we have yeah. we have politics almost everywhere. Politics in the music, well, everywhere. You you can uh, there, there is so that 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 is the the, the danger that I see. Lunatics uh, taking over uh, asylum, so that that's uh, and uh, what really can happen is somebody with those lunatic uh, lunatics may simply push the button, but and that would be the end of everything. And uh, personally, for me, like Serbian uh, invasion of NATO into Serbia, as uh, like ignoring all the UN uh, charters, ignoring all the UN documents, it was like a you know trial. A so trial, what yeah. Is, what is, and it worked for them. And so yes. they started invading the, uh, the, the the next country, the next country, the next country. And then suddenly Russia stood in the way and said, stop. And now you go, you go back to yeah. like year 1997 borders. Yeah, yeah. And that caused the shock. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like uh, I read yesterday that Joseph Borrell was very frank in his uh, speeches and he said well it's not about the ukraine that we are fighting but we are fighting for european prosperity so yeah. i see like analogy with year 1939 yeah, yeah. <laughs> see uh you know this conflict ukrainians are just a cannon fodder S I'm, I'm so sorry for that country it's a beautiful country such a wonderful people that uh, the western uh western brainwashing turned them into into a, a cannon fodder west uh, uh west europe uh, nato us this canada sending uh, money sending weapons there but the ukrainians paying uh, with, with their uh, their lives uh, uh and that was and they they sold that uh, they sold that story see how how they that uh, that kind of brainwashing uh, is working I, I hope that somebody really sane enough will uh, simply stop one, uh, stop one day. But unfortunately, the next few months or six or maybe few years, nothing is going to change, and it will be many, many more, uh, more casualties. Ukrainian casualties are now counted in half a million, even more. Nobody exactly knows, uh, but uh, it's it's evident uh, on the Ukrainian streets how many uh, how many people uh, military age are not coming back. And how many pe people ex uh, escape uh, uh, or let's say emigrate? It it is it is terrible. Uh, Ukraine was taken. Uh, Ukraine was simply pulled into the in the whole the whole this mess. And the only only purpose for the West is they want to bleed Russia. They don't care how many Ukrainians in Russia will die in, in this special military operation. Or most likely is going to expand to uh, uh, for for the, for the full scale war. But uh, they don't care. They don't care. All they need is, is, is the U.S. Congress 
Congress people, which is U.S. Congress is the biggest brothel in the world. They're doing every kind of services and uh, most expensive services in the world. And their senators and Congress Congress people simply said they don't care. They uh, only only uh, the, the best investment put the money and kill as, as many Russians as uh, as, uh, as possible. And they don't care how many Ukrainians will be killed, how many uh, other uh, other nationals will be killed. They don't care for the for the um, their own allies in in uh, former worse apart uh, countries. They don't care for Romania. They don't care for Poland. They simply don't care because uh, you know NATO. This is the the ruling elite, forefathers of uh, six seven countries, and everything else is just uh, every, uh, everybody else is just expendable. Yeah. So yeah, so we'll, we'll see what is going to happen. Uh, but not uh, I I don't think any, uh, nothing good will happen in, in the next few years. And of course, the casualties are going to um, explode. And now the friends with its plans. But I think we, we will discuss that yeah. in more details like tomorrow when we will be doing yeah. our yeah. military yeah. update. But yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> France is playing games, and also French president has a lot of problems in, on, on his own, uh, his own, whatever is his, his wife or whatever gender is that. So he, uh, they're trying to. Uh, He's trying to to deflect. Uh, it's typical typical uh, stuff uh, that they do. Uh, the the biggest problem is now what uh, this uh, because they started. They, they know that they are losing uh, losing war on, on the battlefield. So they they said uh, that it uh, it will be nasty sur surprises in Russia, and it's happening. I mean, those all of those terrorist attacks, those terrorist attacks are simply finance organized. Uh, you you can see the the footprints or fingerprints of the Western intelligence services. Yeah, and it looks a lot like, uh, again, like it was in Serbia, because I think that uh, according from what I read from the historians, it is like NATO provided uh, aviation for the uh, party yes. which was yeah. Ser Serbs. Yeah, exactly. NATO, NATO um, airplane was um, Albanian terrorist UJK Air Force. Uh, also NATO operatives on the, on the field. Uh, Forward observers, special forces. We, uh, we knew that they, they were around. Some of them uh, got killed, uh, but you know you will never read about uh, them. Those kind. Of, if somebody of those guys got, got killed on the battlefield, uh, after a few weeks it will be announced as somewhere that um, plane crash um, or a hiking trail. He fell into the ditch or a grizzly bear or polar bear. Eat, eat them, whatever. So this 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 is way how they how they're doing. We, we uh, they uh, there was a. There was a special forces. There were actually special forces from multiple countries in, in, in Bosnia. Uh, they were French, uh, British, uh, U.S. special forces. They were uh, also they, they directed uh, NATO attacks. So we we knew that uh, they're there, uh, and we knew what we what we uh, what is against us. But you know what what was Yugoslavia? It was just just a very weak economically uh, country with out, outdated weapons outdated systems so but we, we've done well, what we can at, at least we got that on paperwork that kosovo is still part of yugoslavia even even uh, they got recognized by uh, uh nato countries as independent country kosovo is just a hub a narcotic hub and uh, uh nato bond steel base is the is is a distri distribution center hub for for narcotics to, from they're coming from through Turkey uh, and distribution to to Western Europe. I know a few Albanian, Albanian drivers. They told me that fifty to sixty kilos of heroin uh, they smuggled in their trucks, bring it to the base. Somebody uh, uh, they just leave truck there. Somebody took that and whatever they finish, who knows. Well, yeah, I have uh, also heard something like that. It was back in 2004. Mm -hmm. One of my, uh, uh, a girl I studied with in the university, her husband was uh, working in customs mm -hmm. then. And he told that uh, Kosovo was created as a narcotic hub yeah, to yeah. transfer the drugs from like Afghanistan into yeah. Western Europe. Yeah, because <laughs> heroin from Afghanistan was smuggled through Iran. Uh, to uh, to Turkey and from Turkey to in Istanbul, I know exactly how it's going because the the drivers they, they told me they park the truck uh, in some some locations and they leave the keys in after a day or a few hours whatever the truck was um, moved uh, let's say six seven meters or ten meters so that uh, they know that uh, it's loaded the, um, behind their engine blocks they build uh, separate containers where they uh, where they hide the uh, I the uh, heroin, 
So and uh, that uh, that uh, narco traffic line uh, was from Istanbul to through Bulgaria uh, and from Bulgaria to Macedonia, Macedonia Kosovo, and from Kosovo to uh, you know, Kosovo and Bosnia, and from there the world is uh, limited. Yeah, and I also heard some some stories about organ trade. So yes, possible. yes, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. There was a yellow house uh, in 1998. It, uh, I believe it was in Albania. They took uh, healthy people, uh, even children. They extracted their organs and uh, they sold that to the rich and sick people uh, in the West. Even um, there is a book um, written by uh, Carol Ponte. She was the prosecutor, and uh, that that was mentioned. Even uh, uh, the former. Uh, artificial um, country um, country of Kosovo president was now uh, was arrested and he's now in in Hague on that uh, international court uh, regarding the war crimes that include all of those or, uh, also organ traffic trafficking but I don't think that he will be he will be uh, <laughs> sentenced because they're going to uh, to wash out they're go they're going to invent something uh, but definitely yeah it was it was organ trafficking. I know guys who who found uh, the bodies with uh, that uh, missing uh, kidneys, uh, liver, eyes. Uh, it, it it's gruesome, but um, it's not in function anymore because now there is a much much bigger source. Uh, that source is in Ukraine because now organ trafficking from Ukraine is uh, blossom. Yeah, we have also all all heard stories like from the soldiers the organs were destructed and not only from soldiers like kids were smuggled out of the yeah. Ukraine it was reported yeah. by some media. Yeah. So yeah, yeah like that's any. True. That's true. One thing is when you read in in, in the press, but other uh, other thing is which is much heavier when you hear for somebody that you know or somebody who saw that in person. And I know guys who saw the, who saw those bodies without uh, kidneys or uh, that missing uh, missing uh, missing organs. So yeah, it was um, it, it was organized, and uh, there was a guy. I think he was his French guy, Kushner or Kushner, something like that. Um, he was uh, he's rubbing his uh, shoulders with uh, with Albanian uh, with Kosovo terrorists. So he was the one who who one of the orchestrators. Of course, I know um, it's not to me to provide the evidence, but you know, he, his name is circulated. His name circulated uh, in through, uh, through the intelligent uh, intelligence uh, uh, circles. So and the, the, he, but he was not uh, he was not the single one, and uh, yeah, it's um, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, but th this this is one of the particular gruesome uh, war crimes, what they've done. Yeah, and one more question is like about Srebrenica and what happened there because uh, also yeah. So it is. Uh, I will tell a short story what my father told me because um, I think 15 years ago he met a man in the airport who was uh, from Serbia and he served under Ratko Mladic mm -hmm. and he told my father uh, the story which uh, he heard. And he heard it, uh, it uh, no, my I will tell now what my father told me. Mm -hmm. It was uh, uh, that uh, like Bosnians committed crimes against Serbs and they killed a lot of Serbs in the surroundings. Yes. And then Ratko Mladic came in and uh, he divided all the people who who are present. He said, uh, if you are from 16 to 65, if you are local, then you go into one line. If you are like not local, you are going into the other line and show your hands. So he searched for traces of gun gunpowder. Gun powder, yes, yeah, yeah, that's correct. And all the people who were not local and who had traces of gunpowder, he like executed them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, I, I wasn't in Srebrenica, uh, but I know the guy who, I, actually several uh, several guys who were there. And that's basically the uh, very similar to the stuff that uh, that you heard. Uh, there was a, there was a there was a killing of uh, prisoners, and that uh, I'm against that. So, on the uh, it was uh, some some war crimes that uh, committed by some people, uh, not the military necessary, but some para paramilitary groups. Uh, but the genocide or something like that, no, that that, that simply didn't happen. And you're right, uh, the people were separated, and uh, they performed uh, some kind of paraffin test uh, to, to check the uh, residues for the for, for the gunpowder. Some of those groups uh, that were actually escorted to, toward the Bosnian uh, Bosnian uh, territories, uh, they killed some of the Serbian civilians. But uh, the local Serbian commanders, they got them. They they caught them. They tried to escape and uh, basically they, they killed them. 
no excuses for any, for, for any killing, but it was not really about what happened. They're talking about uh, what what they happened in uh, what happened in the, in the Western press. They're talking about eight thousand people. Even one is too much, but uh, it was not eight thousand, and there was a lot of a lot of games because they they uh, Bosnia Bosnia side they they start to to bring people who died in totally different parts of uh, Bosnia, people who died ten years before the war even started to to, to bury them there, and there were there were many many proofs, but you know once uh, once the sensationalistic story. Uh, was told, uh, somebody told to, uh, on the West with proposal that was Western uh, mainstream media. Uh, it is hard to uh, it is hard to uh, to correct that, and it will take many many years to many years to do. Again, some paramilitary groups they kill prisoners, but they should, uh, and uh, they, in my opinion, they should be arrested and, and tried locally. Some uh, a lot of Serbian commanders were arrested uh, and sent to uh, to Hague, uh, which is. I know that that tribunal is orchestrated by uh, by the West, and why nobody uh, brought, for instance, Americans there or Brits that committed war crimes uh, on the previous wars. But you know, it, uh, uh, how the tribunal is is a political one. Um, and uh, but what really happened uh, is that it's not like uh, something that happened uh, that that was in the, uh, that was in the stories. Again, even some innocent people may uh, may got killed, and but that, that that is crime. But whatever they're talking in, in the press about genocide or something like that, they have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, and yeah, so I I I, I agree with you totally because it was a conflict, and there were yeah. conflicts conflicts. There was parties. many many uh, war crimes, for instance, in in the village Kravitsa, they killed more than 150 people, I, as far as I remember numbers. Maybe I'm wrong with the numbers, and mostly civilians, older people, children. Uh, and who, uh, that was committed uh, by people who typically are not from from the from the area. There are people that came from uh, from Middle East, Mujahideens, uh, uh, and the, the war in Bosnia was actually the only only conflict where, for instance, Iranians supply uh, the same stuff that that West, uh, uh, similar stuff to the to the Bosnian uh, government, uh, Bosnian military uh, with the West. So the it, it was actually. Kind of ridiculous because they're en they're enemies on any any other part of the world, but in Bosnia they uh, it was the uh, they they supplied the, the same group. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, I will tell you the story. Uh, those foreign volunteers. Uh, when I was in Afghanistan, I met one Indian guy who worked for the UN, and uh, on the Zag in Zagreb Bel in Zagreb uh, airport, there was a group of um, uh, journalists um, from Middle East, maybe eighty of them. Then he asked uh, those guys uh, for what kind of um, uh, TV or news uh, uh, news houses they, they work. They look. They look at him. And said, "No, we are not working with that." But they all had uh, uh, all had uh, the press uh, uh, IDs, and they were brought to Zagreb and from Zagreb to Bosnia uh, through some channels, with, let's say CIA or MI6 or whatever. So that that, mm -hmm. that, that is just one one sample. Also, um, NATO supply Bosnian troops with with the weapons uh, packed in the in the food. It, it happened several times. I know a guy who who opened one of those uh, packages and it was like a uh, canned meat, but instead of canned meat, it was uh, ammunition inside. Mm -hmm. So Bosnia Bosnia war was so dirty with all of those tricks uh, that that were put. That uh, sometimes I uh, I don't even want to want to remember uh, what happened there. Yeah, and it is like the, that diplomat which I was referring to in the very beginning, uh, uh, Anatoly Adamishin, he also said that th this was the first conflict when uh, good good guys and bad guys were uh, like assigned from the very beginning. So that it wasn't about like ending the conflict, searching yeah. for truth and reconciling. It was about like I'm pointing you are the bad and you are good and we are doing every, everything to help that yeah, good exactly. guy. Exactly. I had, a, I had a friend from the military the, that fought on the other side during the war. But, and after the war, we, we met, we talked. Said there, there is no hate between us. It said Everybody went to, to each own side. But all of us uh, think that uh, it was orchestrated from, from outside. And uh, they, they cheated on us. They, they, they deceived us. They, because uh, it was not like, uh, like uh, it was presented, uh, presented in media. And I have friends, Albanian friends, Croatian friends, Bosnian friends. Every, every everyone has the, has the same 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 opinion. 
and uh, what what was all of that for, for, for nothing just just it was uh, we, we were all part of the one of the big uh, empire games to call that and th that that game that was uh, that is still going this is still ongoing just ordinary people yeah. make ordinary people to hate each other so that uh, elites uh, political elites can fill their their pockets and their their bank, bank accounts and western europe and uh, north america is full of those uh, profiteers from uh, from the war if you see somebody that living in the in the mansions and came uh, at the time uh, in the, some in the, let's say father and mother were, were politicians at that time it, it, it's easy to to recognize how how they got uh, finances for for all of this stuff look what what's happening now in ukraine uh, they, they're driving the the most modern cars that uh, you know, like um, Rolls Royce or, or Bentley, you know, which only and Porsche or whatever. And the, how 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 on earth they got money to, to buy that? If they leave with their paycheck to paycheck? Yeah, that's it's profitable. It's a huge theft. Simply huge theft, and all of that that helped that coming to Ukraine. I, if Ukrainian ordinary people are getting one percent of all, all all of that stuff, they they can consider themselves lucky. Politicians they, they grab everything, fill their bank accounts, buying the the most expensive cars. But you know, not, nothing lasts forever. That that's uh, that's something that I learned. Who knows? Yeah, what's that's true. Next with with the, the, those kind of people. And now I'm recalling also the phrase which uh, Vladimir Truhan says, we both know him, and he said about Serbia that uh, if NATO invaded on foot, on the ground, they, they would lose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If they got in our hills and mountains, uh, it will be bloody. And we waited for them, basically. We, we, uh, the, all our defense was set up so that we tried to deflect their air attacks and... Uh, wait for their, them to, to try a uh, land attack. And he also said that the first like uh, color uh, revolution which happened, it was in Serbia, it was uh, taking down Milosevic. Yes, yeah, yeah, the 5th October. I mean, I did, uh, as I said, I, I, I didn't like him. He, he cheated on 1996, he stole election in 1996. He was the bastard in some way, but uh, he was president. He was president and... Uh, that the color revolution was orchestrated by some democratic opposition and after that they that democratic opposition start to uh first the first what they've done they they sold him to to the west for some credits for promises uh, and the people are not doing people should not sell their their own uh, their own they sold him to 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 to, to hug uh he, he, he uh, i'm I'm telling you now, he's supposed to go to prison for a long time, but in Serbia, no, no, not not to be tried um, outside. And all of them who, who committed crimes, uh, any kind of crimes, they should be they should they should be tried in Serbia and serve their sentences in in, in Serbia. But uh, politicians, they sold them and they sold them for so that they can fill their own pockets, uh, promises or whatever. So that's the reason that uh, I gave up on on on, on those so-called revolutions and. Uh, politicians that, that came after you know it's uh in the end uh, ordinary people paying for all of that yeah that's definitely that's that way and uh, uh, my question is uh well i didn't plan to ask it, ask it but uh, now i remember that vucic i think yesterday or today in the very very early morning he said that something is going to happen within next 48 hours well, well, what could that yeah, be? I, I, I believe that he uh, he got uh, valid information from intelligence services. There is a DIA, there is a military intelligence. So I, I don't know the details. I really can't discuss about details because I I, I don't know. But, but if, what, if yeah, if he said that uh, something may happen, it, it it may happen. But what what could be the I don't know the end of the conflict because that Kosovo questions arises and. Uh... As soon as NATO yeah. got weaker, the um, Albanians, they're already, I don't know how many of them left uh, for Western Europe because they think that it's better. And uh, they, they said it's about 2 million or something Albanians. No, it's it's maybe six, seven hundred thousand. And uh, this number is based on the number of uh, cell phones. Now Nowadays, everybody, everybody uh, has a, a cell phone. So that is how many uh, SIM cards operating in, in, in Kosovo. Mm, I see. 
Yeah, oh. because they, uh, they use that visa uh, relaxation. I'm not sure that is a correct term, but uh, so that they can go and work in Western Europe. Now they have competition for the people from um, Africa, uh, migrants. They have people from Ukraine. So Europe is getting messy. But you know what? They they ask, they got. <laughs> yeah. But I think, well, it's my personal point of view that uh, very much will depend on how as. Uh, as Mio ends. If it if yeah, it ends on yeah, Russian yeah, terms, yeah. then it will be peace in Serbia finally too. Yeah. Well, uh, special military operation uh, is ongoing. Is it going to escalate? Yeah, I think it's going to escalate maybe on some some higher level uh, because NATO they said that they they can't uh, let Ukraine lose, so they're going to fight uh, until the last uh, Ukrainian. Uh, in Ukraine, NATO will be rebuilt. As the strongest power in the world, or it will be uh, broken. But uh, NATO is not facing uh, Serbia in 1999. It is Russia under President Putin, and he is his Russian patriot. He knows how the, how things are going, and he knows that if Russia lose, there there is no Russia. But also China knows that if Russia lose, there is no China. Yeah. So nobody can can predict what is going to happen. But uh, in any case. Um, it will be bloody one or another way and uh, hopefully that some somebody sane enough uh, in ukraine may, may simply say enough is enough but you know uh they, they got into that circle finance finance uh, by west so they they can get out once seen it's almost impossible to get out so it's there will be the full destruction of the country uh landlocked country and Russia will claim uh, historically Russian uh, territories like Malorossia and uh, Nov uh, Novorossia. Uh, but also, what, what is funny, I, I read somewhere that Ukraine, the word Ukraine was first time uh, mentioned officially in 1917. Uh, and uh, the last commander of Ukrainian nationalists during the war, I, I, I think that I read somewhere that it was his words. Everything else was just a diff different terminology. But yeah, you know, Russia and Zaporozhka yeah, siege, yes, yeah, yeah, Zaporozhka siege. So it, it's uh, something that um, it's not presented in, in the West. People, people on this, they, uh, in that area, they know their the history. But in the West, it's uh, just a big brainwashing. Yeah, and uh, oh, well, I was thinking, but well, ah, I wanted to ask about downing of that uh, stealth. Here is this this picture. I remember when we were all watching the news. Well, we we had your news always on when the invasion started, and we were very happy in my family when we see seen this footage. I didn't find the footage the, the footage itself, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe I will just try to find one. Yeah, I published it today on on the Substack. Uh, this is basically the final story. What uh, what happened uh, on that on uh, that night? Yeah, this is the, the funny. Uh, this is the funny uh, song about um, Downing. Uh, we love to uh, we like to make uh, to make the jokes. Uh, yeah, it was um, it, that that event was really a fateful one because uh, the first time in the history and uh, so far up to twenty five years quarter of a century is the only officially recognized uh, stealth. We got um, um, another one, and after twenty years, NATO actually uh, recognized that that um, the plane was damaged by the same unit, uh, the third uh, third battalion, uh, and uh, but it was able to land in uh, Spandalem in, in Germany. And also, there is one more which we still don't have any official uh, official information because uh, what happened? Uh, NATO is hiding that uh, the same the same thing as they hide uh, their losses in Ukraine. Uh, it will probably it will be probably published as some completely different stuff. Maybe it's one of the stealth was damaged during the landing in the states or whatever. So uh, this this is the way how they're working. Uh, uh, stealth was down. It, there is no, there is nothing uh, unusual with that. It was a simply trained crew, guys uh, from the third battalion, uh, combat ship. They they knew exactly uh, how to operate that system, old Soviet um, S-125 system. Uh, deputy commander is is my, is my friend, the uh, lieutenant colonel uh, George Anicic. We wrote a book about that uh, together. There was a couple other publications. Uh, it was prof uh, professionalism to, to, uh, on the top. 
So there is no secret modifications. There is nothing that that was circulated, uh, Baba Yaga or some some intervention of who knows what kind of uh, powers. It was pro professionally done. Uh, we had no idea that was uh, stealth actually, uh, because for us it was only target. It was a blip on the screen and. Uh, guys lock at the screen uh, it was a little bit tricky to get it because uh, unusual characteristics uh, a reflection from the rcs uh, rc reflection of a uh, radar cross section but it was um, we, we were able to locate it uh, with the p18 old soviet radar then on snr 125 uh, fire control radar uh, the ship was able to to lock on the system and uh, missiles two missiles were fired on, on, on that airplane but uh, because it's old system, never, never, uh, mod never modernized. Uh, just try to keep it uh, in some working conditions. Only, only first missile hit, uh, hit a plane because the uh, second missile uh, missile lost uh, guidance. It was simply uh, mal malfunctions of, um, of the second channel, second uh, gui uh, gui guidance uh, channel. So only first missile uh, hit the um, hit the plane, and the rest is uh, the rest is history. They were, uh, NATO was able, or US Air Force were, were able to evacuate the pilot. It was a little bit unorganized from our, our side, uh, but it was really surprised when he uh, when we saw that uh, the track is kind of you know black color. Uh, we expected maybe some other most known, uh, more known fighters like the conventional fighters, but it was it was great boost uh, for us. We had a lot of jokes and then uh, or memes again against uh, NATO, but it was the whole uh, the whole action. I brought that in um, your viewers or. Uh, Readers can find that on a substack. This is the, this is from our. This is what really happened there. So nothing, uh, nothing uh, superstitious or nothing. Uh, no, no modifications. Uh, 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 we simply uh, performed professionally, and uh, that was it. Yeah. And well, then the same, the same crew with the, uh, the other commander uh, got uh, damaged. The second one, and also the, I believe uh, it was. Um, uh, one other battalion they hit uh, the third one but we still don't have any any information about the, the third one we know that from our intelligence that uh, some big big um, boxes were packed in uh, germany and shipped to uh, ship to the states uh, uh, also there were some stories about b2 I, i'm not going to say b2 or not but it was a very big unusual target and that night was especially heavy because uh, radio traffic was crazy Scramble, uh, scramble lines, open lines, all NATO planes were in the air. I don't know, maybe 24 uh, fighters were in the air. A battalion, third battalion was attacked with uh, no less than, than, than 12. It was um, several hours constant uh, tracking for our guys. Uh, we used extensively uh, radar imitators, tried to illuminate one of the attacking group with the fire control ladder, the second, uh, the second group. It was completely un uh, unusual stuff. The story was uh, that it was B2. We had some uh, some intelligence reports from the, from the Croatia because that big object uh, crashed into the into the Spatron forest uh, right on the Croatian border. Uh, I, I have some friends that were there. They couldn't even uh, need to block every single access road to that. Some big trucks were uh, recorded, uh, covered with tarp. For two months, they go back and forth. So that area was cordoned. Uh, on the place where allegedly that uh, that big object uh, crashed, there was a big, big uh, pond, much bigger than it, it, it was before. There are some traces of the heavy vehicles. But um, if nothing happened, why should anybody put uh, two months, 100% uh, cordons? Uh, Croatian police, uh, K4, or, and the NATO, for, NATO forces were there. Uh, trucks uh, moving back and forth. Why should anybody do that uh, in some ir irrelevant uh, border uh, forest area if not and uh, but uh, you know the, the, there's a couple other analysis uh, i know the guy who look who looked basically in the radar that big object uh, disappearing on the certain azimuth certain direction uh we had the radio communication our uh, signal intelligence picked up uh, conversation between pilots uh, picked up uh, also scramble conversation between multiple nato striking groups something definitely bottom line something definitely definitely happened that night uh, I would say big object because we don't have a. If I have a piece of uh, from that wreck, I would say yeah. Then, then we have material evidence, but uh, something big was hit that night. What was that? Time to tell. Yeah, we will know. But I after, uh, bear in mind that after that, uh, B B two uh, never flew again over Yugoslavia in the combat missions, 
and in the in the U.S. base, uh, home base, I think it, it was um, Holloman, maybe I'm wrong, um, uh, uh, home base, uh, was not, um, uh, the plane came the next day, after, the, after 32 hours or something like that, our intelligence picked up that too. So something, something definitely happened. Uh, I can say that it was 100% because we don't have material evidence, but there is a many, many indications. And I, I wrote that in the, in the book. There was maybe 20 something indications uh, picked up from the intelligence, both in Croatia, uh, US, and, uh, and Bosnia, that something, something happened that night. That's interesting. Yeah. And final question it's about deplete, depleted uranium shells, which NATO used yeah. again. Yeah. yeah, they Sorry. used that on 8, 8 10, and uh, especially on, uh, on the Kosovo and Metokia territory. There are many, many, many areas. But you know what, what, what really happened? How, how, uh, I, I, I would point this uh, parallel. Uh, those areas where we were most exposed to the, to the depleted uh, uranium, uh, US troops, British troops, and Canadian troops, they were not located there. They sent Italians. They send some. They send French uh, troops. So, cream was stayed away from those areas. But poor Italians, uh, for instance, Bersaglieri unit. Uh, there are many, many uh, cases after that of cancer and leukemia and all of those uh, illnesses uh, related to the to the, the depleted uranium. Uh, you know, so, so you can you can see how how like how they like each other. So uh, for for US, it was easier just to dump uh, uh, that area, most exposed area, to to Italians. Yeah, they didn't know that. After that, we, uh, our intelligence communicated that to them, but it was too late. And that, yeah, that was, uh, it, uh, it, uh, this information is still kept in secret. But whoever want to want to uh, uh, to get deeper, yeah, there there uh, you can do research, and now more and more information uh, information are available. Need to use depleted uranium in Bosnia. A friend of mine who is now living in Canada, his son was four years old. He played with one of those shell, uh, one of those uh, rounds. 30 millimeter rounds, and uh, that poor boy died from leu leukemia. So uh, that is something that NATO dumped over over Yugoslavia. They uh, uh, they they dumped that in Iraq. Whenever they they come, they dump uh, uh, that garbage. They're talking about that it's uh, harmless, but no, it's not. It's not. They're lying. They're yeah, they were talking. They were claiming that oh, it's harmless. I mean, yeah, so whoever, it's only depleted and yeah, who, it, it who, isn't radioactive and so on. Whoever does not believe that, uh, simply ask uh, what happened to Italian Bersaglieri. And I know if, if anybody of them look at that, ask uh, ask uh, colleagues who serve in, in that time in, in Kosovo what really happened to a, a lot of people, who, uh, a lot of Italian soldiers uh, that were in that uh, contingent. Uh, it, it is it it, it can't be uh, can't be changed. I mean, uh, a lot a lot of fertile ground was uh, uh, poisoned with, uh, with that kind of uh, ammunition. But uh, nobody nobody in the West will take uh, responsibility. Simply nobody, because they don't care. They simply don't care about uh, anyone anyone except themselves. Yeah, I see. But I still hope that uh, something will change after SMO and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully for better. And just people to stop get killed. That's that's probably the most important thing. Yeah. We need enough sane people to, to make decisions. Yeah. And Mike, thank you. Thank you a lot for such insightful interview. It was very interesting. And okay. I hope that our audience will also find it very interesting because it's an important topic and we must not forget about that. And yeah. we you. must constantly remind people what has happened in yeah. order these things not to come back once again. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Now we see that history is repeating itself, and history is uh, such a teacher. If you don't listen to history once, it will repeat itself. Yeah, exactly. Next time, and next time, yeah. and next time. So my, my hopefully, <laughs> we will do something that yeah, yeah. to I stop it from out. repeating itself the next. Yeah. Time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So thanks, thanks everyone for being with us. Bye bye. See you next time. Goodbye. Okay,